everybody. Thank you for coming. This should be an interesting thing. It's not working. There should be a little switch. Is this no? Uh, he showed me where it was, but I forgot. <laughs> Is there a teenager in the house? <laughs> yeah, where's Matt? Yeah. How's this? Oh, yeah, I can hear that too. Anyway, welcome. Um, today, of course, we're going to be talking about the various um, kinds of Medicare and Advantage. Um, Christine comes to us from the CDCOA, Council on Aging. She has worked there for 24 years, so she knows her stuff. Um, well, I asked, no, she's already answered a number of my questions, so I know she knows it. So enjoy, take notes, and um, have fun. Okay, you thank you very much. Uh, why don't we put that back up there? Yeah. yeah, I'm not good with mechanical stuff, so I might break it. Do you want the lights? Too. Um, ha there can everyone? Have how, let's see, let's experiment. And uh, the, can everyone see this? Yeah, this, so this is our slideshow. Um, I'm Christine Melichurek. I come from Central Vermont Council on Aging, and I've been there forever. And um, my title is Information Assistance Specialist, but that's not what always my title was. They kept keep, uh, you know, rearranging my job. And this is my contact information uh, right up there. So if you want to track me down afterwards. And at the end of the presentation, there will be a t quiz to see how many of you know how to spell Melichrek. <laughs> so it's Slovak. It's actually Melichrek, but we don't have a in English. <laughs> So this is what we're going to do. We're going to, uh, you know, basically do general introductions and uh, talk about our services and understanding the different parts of Medicare, uh, the supplement plans known as Medigaps, and uh, talk about the drug plans and the um, financial programs out there and fraud and uh, resources that are available. So um, this is our gener generic slideshow that we do on Zoom once a month. So if you call our main office and you want to Zoom into a class, you can uh, sign up and they will send you this and some other type of handouts and you'll automatically be, be plugged in for the Zoom class. The next one's October 10th and it's an evening class. Um, we do it every other, uh, other month. We do an evening class uh, one month and an afternoon class the next month because a lot of people who come are just turning 65 and are still working. So that's why we do it every other month that way to accommodate people. So uh, basically the first thing I wanna know is how many folks are actually on Medicare? Okay, is there any, any newbies? What, one newbie, two newbies? I know. Okay, okay. <laughs> All right. So, um, yeah, but you're, you're, you're heading that way. Yeah, I so, stuff in the mail. Oh, well, the mail. That, we'll, yeah, we'll get to that. <laughs> so, um, basically, it might be good for you, after we talk here, to take our Zoom, our Zoom workshop to... You, no one understands this on the first, the first outing, so uh, people usually have to hear it over and over again. But since most of you are on, already on Medicare, what kind of questions do you have? Do you have more questions about the, the drug program or supplements or Advantage plans? Uh, go ahead. Oh, I heard that there's going to be a big change at the end of the month, which is like uh, Saturday, something to do with Medicare, Medicaid. Uh, no, I haven't heard that. Would you repeat the question? Uh, was it, is there going to be a change at the end of the month, Saturday? Yeah, a lot of people are going to get kicked off. Oh, no. They've already got kicked off. Yeah. They're going to get back on. What happened was with the, the programs, not Medicare and Medicaid, that's uh, Medicare, that's for everyone, but the Medicaid programs is that during the pandemic, they extended everyone's eligibility, so everyone did not get uh, applications. And so now they're renewing them. And yes, as people, uh, if you don't hand in your stuff to the health access eligibility unit, yeah, you'd get kicked off, or if you found ineligible. So there are a lot of people who have left yeah. Could you explain the difference between Medicare and Medicaid? 
Okay. Yeah, well, well we're going to do that. Yes. Uh, so, um, uh, the gentleman in the back. Uh, the question I was having was that uh, they're promoting these advantage plants so heavily, and I don't have that. I have the other uh, the supplemental, supplemental, and yeah. I'm trying to understand the, the difference and why I should I yeah. should I move to the advantage? It doesn't seem like anyway. I, yeah. That's, I yeah. And the other thing is, uh, I want to remind you, this is being taped. So probably if you have, uh, I, I wouldn't blurt out your social security number or Medicare number or anything like that, um, because we are going to, there is going to be a tape of this. If you want a private consultation, you should call us, you know, call our helpline, and they will schedule a, a meeting with you, either over the phone or in person with one of the people who are trained to do ship counseling. So, okay, so that gives me an idea of what you guys are looking for. So, whoop, yes, yeah, so this is a sponsor. Could you turn off that light there? Yes, I'm just waiting to turn it off. Oh, that's better. Is that good? Everyone see? Okay. So the state health insurance assistance program called SHIP is, a, that's a federal grant, and in Vermont it's given to the five councils on aging, or area agencies on aging that are around the state. And we're trained to, to help people with Medicare and Medicaid issues. Um, so we get the grant and then we go through training and then we, we do, this has become so, a lot more prevalent since they invented Medicare D. Uh, so uh, we do a lot of ship counseling now at Council on Aging. Um, our our, um, our uh, consultations are free, all of our services are free actually, uh, unbiased and it's confidential and we are not supported by any particular insurance company. Um, we get money through, through uh, the state and some Fed money, and uh, we're in the you'll see us in the town reports. We get town money, municipal money, and we also uh, take private donations and do fundraising. So Central Vermont Council on Aging is at what's known as an area agency on aging. So back, uh, you, who remembers President Johnson? <laughs> okay. Well, five years old. Yeah, yeah. So he was um, back in his administration. He started a lot of programs. So he started Medicare, then Medicaid, and he did created uh, the Older Americans Act was passed during his administration, and that creates the area agencies on aging. So each state does it differently. In our state, the state is divided up into five sections. So we're in Central Vermont Council on aging. Our main office is in Barry. Uh, we are a nonprofit, um, so we're not obligated to sell anyone's uh, product or anything like that. And our mission is to keep, give people good quality of life and help the, while they're still in the community. People are, are limited 60 or older. So we help people 60 or older and certain disabled folks who are, who are a bit younger. Okay, so here are Council on Aging Services. Uh, we do case management, information assistance. We help with food stamps, fuel assistance. Uh, we work with the Meals on Wheels programs and nutrition programs. Uh, we do the health insurance counseling. We have a caregiver program now because more and more people are staying at home and having family members take care of them. And those people need a lot of support to do that. Um, everyone's caregiving needs are different. And and um, uh, no one comes with an instruction book. So we do a lot to support caregivers. We also work with uh, Washington County Mental Health, and we work with legal aid when people need that type of counseling. Uh, they don't necessarily provide lawyers, but you could get some counseling. Uh, we have a contract with them for some counseling for legal issues. And we also provide transportation services. And we also like volunteers if you want to join us. So. Um, so, Medicare is a federal health insurance program, and it was invented about 1965, and it's for folks 65 and older. So the difference between Medicare and Medicaid is Medicare is for everyone once they turn 65. Medicaid is for people who have low income and resources, and we're going to talk about that a little more uh, later. So uh, certain people with disabilities can also uh, get um, 
get uh, Medicare, like if you have uh, end-stage kidney disease, ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease. Um, uh, so, and, and if you're disabled for two years, you then, you, uh, you know, on SS, uh, you're on disability for two years, then you could get Medicare, you're eligible. So I think this is the most important slide we have in our presentation because it, it's a good roadmap. So when they first invented Medicare, they invented A and B. Now A is your hospital insurance. You pay for that while you're working. That's your ta where your taxes go. They go to the Part A trust fund. Um, and once you work 10 years, or your spouse, 10 years or 40 quarter years, uh, you are vested for Medicare A. And you don't have to pay for it. Um, if you don't work that, uh, that, that uh, about a time, then you have to pay, pay something towards it. Medicare B is all your medical stuff. So that's uh, doctor visits, surgeries, um, durable medical equipment, um, uh, you know, OT, PT, uh, that type of stuff. That falls under a Medicare B. And that you do have to pay for once you turn 65. Uh, it, right now it's $164.90 a month. Um, so, and that's, if you're on Social Security, it comes automatically on your Social Security check. Then Medicare D is the drug plan they invented in 2006. Uh, yeah, I believe it was 2006. Um, and that is for, um, you know, they give you, you join a private drug plan. These two are administered by the government, by the Medicare uh, Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. But the drug plans are private plans. So you purchase one of the plans. There are 24 in uh, 2023 available. Um, and this time of year, everyone gets ready to pick out their 2024 plans. Although they don't tell us what they're going to be until just before open enrollment starts on October 15th. And then you could get a supplement to fill in the gaps in Medicare A and B. And those are private insurances as well. So I bet a lot of you have those. Yep, okay. So this is the original way to get Medicare. This is, was, is the origi is called original or traditional Medicare. Now, uh, back in the 90s, they started inventor inventing managed care programs, and that's when they invented Medicare C. So if you're gonna be on Medicare C, the Advantage plan, you have to sign up for A and B, but then instead of getting D and a supplement, you can put that, your A and B on the shelf and you can, you can take, get by an Advantage plan. So, and they, and they, have, um, they have a drug component in Vermont too. So you don't have to get a separate drug plan. So basically it's one way or the other. You can't have uh, some of these and some of those. You either have to pick that or, or this, this uh, route. So th that's why I think it's the most important because it's a good overview of everything. So we start talking about Advantage plans, or the Part C plans, when we, we do these presentations because that's where people tend to have the most questions. So there are 21 of them available for 2023 in the state of Vermont. And they are managed care plans. So that means that you have to work with their network and in their geographical district. Um, and uh, you know, then you have to get prior approvals for stuff or pre-authorizations. Uh, so that's more prevalent in, in the Advantage plans. Uh, th how many Advantage plans do we have in here? So uh, yeah, about eight, maybe. So um, I don't know. <laughs> you don't know? <laughs> I figured this out long oh, okay. <laughs> a lot of people do. In terms of where you're, where you're being served, is it just New England or is there, you know, some kind of this plan? Does it limit if you're traveling or you're not covered? Yes. yes. So uh, basically, the Advantage plans they're all different, and all 21 of them. And most companies have several levels of them. So AARP or Blue Cross Blue Shield. Well, care any of those guys, they have the cheapy plan where you only pay the $164.90, and that's all you pay. So you don't have to pay for a drug plan or a supplement, any of that. 
and then they have a medium plan, which is $50 to $75 extra you'd pay, and then they have a Cadillac plan over $100, and they all give different service levels. But with Advantage plans, it's, like I said, it's an alternative to um, original Medicare. It's private insurance, so all of your services go through the insurance company you pick. Um, you continue to pay for your Part B premium. They continue to take it out of your Social Security check. Um, and the services are provided through um, preferred provider networks or uh, HMOs or you know the, uh, cer certain networks. And you, the best bet is to work within their networks, the networks that, uh, that have the doctors who signed up with that particular plan. And some of those prices are, are very low when you use those, those doctors. You, yep? Is it possible to get information and to sign up if you're not doing it on a computer? I never have done it. Yes, you can call if, if you want. That um, you can call at our helpline and we could yeah, assign somebody to you, but uh, they're going to, to talk to you about the different, the different uh, types of plans. The, things with, uh, the thing with Advantage plans is unlike Medicare supplements, they're not comprehensive. A lot of the Medicare supplements, which we're going to talk about in a little while, the old-fashioned Medigaps, they cover everything. The, the Advantage plans, you usually have a copay every step of the way. So you're paying 10, 20, 30 bucks. Yes? So if, excuse me, if I have the Blue Cross Blue Shield Advantage plan, mm -hmm. is that what we're talking about here? Yes. Mm -hmm. But the premiums are higher that I pay than what so yeah, you, so you might have not gotten the cheapy plan. You got it, may have gotten either medium plan or a high dollar plan. But even the high dollar is more than up to the hundred dollars. Some of them, yeah, are, are. It's, the prices are all over the place, yeah. But most companies do offer a plan where you just pay your $164.90. But when you go to the doctor, you have to pay a copay when you walk in the door. Um, you have to work within their networks. And some of them are, um, uh, some of the plans have very broad networks, you know, probably the bigger name ones. Um, and some of them have pretty narrow networks. So one of the complaints about Advantage plans is I can't find a provider in, that, in their network. And well now, you know, we're having a shortage of providers, so I can't find a provider uh, in their network who will take me. <laughs> so that's another, another level of confusion nowadays. So, um, yep. And you don't have the government behind you if you have a problem with, this, with these private insurance because Medicare Advantage is totally They're private. private. Yes. You don't have the government backing you if you have a problem with them. You have to deal with a private insurance company. That's right. Well, that's your first step. But a lot of times people do turn to Medicare and they, they advocate for people. Or we do that too. If you get sick, you go back to Medicare. <laughs> Well, you can do that, but there's a, a bit of a, 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 a trap there, too, as well. Right. So these cover the yeah. same things as original Medicare, but at different prices. So it's not like regular Medicare. It covers things at a set price. Um, they, if they're a Medicare doctor, it's the same all over the country. Do you have another question? Yes, I do. So these Medicare... Um, advantage plans are all run by profit-making insurance companies. Correct. Right. Right. And basically, so your $164 comes out of your Social Security check. It goes to the Medicare Part B trust fund, and then it goes to these private insurance companies. And then they also pay them a little more to, for administrative purposes. Yes? Uh, you're a member of a, like, a teacher's union, and they arrange something. Mm -hmm. um, is that a disadvantage to leave your, it seems to me to leave your... It depends on what they're offering. So usually we do private consultations with people. So people who are from teachers' unions or maybe the old IBM plans, things like that, what happens is they get their summary of what is what, what the plan's going to offer in the next year. So they bring that to their consultation, and uh, we go over what the different options are. If you go on regular Medicare, 
uh, original Medicare, you go on A, B. Well, we talk about supplement options and drug options. If you're going to go on a, 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 an Advantage plan, a private plan, we show you the plan details for that particular plan that you're interested in. And if you have something else, you should have a summary of what that provides. And they have switched some, in my case, they've got the Medicare Advantage. Mm -hmm. They decide each year. Whatever. Right, right. And that really annoys people. <laughs> What's Harris say? That uh, with, with the teacher's retirement plans, they often switch yearly what they're going to provide. So they provide you, if you're a member of the union, they provide you with insurance, but what exact, how the form of the insurance often changes every year. So, so that gets very. Providers would be different. That, that's true, yeah. You know, so you'd want to, on the back of your insurance cards, you usually have a customer service number, and you can call up and ask, you know, what providers you have in your area to see if your doctor is covered. And yes, and with this, it's, uh, if you're going to take an advantage plan, if you really love your doctor, it's really important to find out that they take that plan. Some plan doctors don't take AARP or MVP or, or Cigna, so if you really like your doctor and you want to keep him or her, you, before you sign up, you want to check with their office that they actually take that particular Advantage plan. From what you said, apparently, as opposed to the Medicare Advantage plans, Medi uh, original Medicare is, uh, does not have to be only for people who are in, for doctors who are in the... the um, their network, yeah. Okay, well, what doctors do um, it, all around the United States is they sign up with Medicare for the original Medicare. So any any Medicare doctor, and most of them do sign up. Most doc there are some who don't, but most doctors sign up for Medicare uh, that they're going to um, apply, uh, comply with the Medicare rules, and uh, uh, and they you could go anywhere in the United States. And a lot of the supplements are the same. So let's say you have a Blue Cross Blue Shield or one of the bigger names. If you're visiting your, your grandkids in South Carolina and, heaven forbid, you break your ankle, you can go and if you're on regular Medicare and you could go to the hospital and if it's a Medicare hospital, yes, they, they, um, they, they will take care of you. The most hospitals sign up for Medicare? I'm sorry, but... Do most hospitals sign up for Medicare? Oh, yes. Yes. So uh, they can, all, but if you're out of state, they can also balance bill. In Vermont, there's a rule that if you accept Medicare as a doctor, you cannot balance bill. But if you're over at Dartmouth, say, they can balance bill you. Yeah, there's excess charges in other states. We don't have that here in Vermont. So if Medicare pays, let's say, $100 for a doctor visit, um, that's all the Medicare doctor can charge in the state of Vermont. Other states, if they charge $125, they, you, you know, Medicare will pay the $100 and you have the $25 bill. So when you're traveling, it's a good idea to kind of figure out what you can do ahead of time um, if you travel a lot. Uh, so a lot of times to see a specialist, you need a referral with the Advantage plans and prior approval. And you have to, like I said, you have to check with your providers to make sure that they are, in fact, um, uh, you know, that they, in fact, take the plan that you choose. Remember, there are 21 of them, and they're all different. So, and hopefully at the end we'll have time to show you how to, how to look at the differences. So we start there also because people get tons of mail this time of year from Advantage plans. So, um, and other people, uh, and I was, we usually talk about this at the end, you have to be very careful with your mail. Um, there's a lot of scams out there, those postcard things that don't name a particular company, just throw them away. Um, there are some, uh, most Advantage uh, plan salesmen are uh, pretty honorable, but there are some who really push the limits. They show up on your doorstep or give you a call, even though they're not supposed to call you unless you're already signed up with that plan for something. Um, so you have to be very careful because um, this time of year there's a, a lot of stuff out there. The other thing is the TV commercials are notoriously inaccurate. So if before you choose an Advantage plan, it's really important to look at the plan details. Is 
Is it October 15th that you sign up? October 15th through December 7th. Every year, you can switch your Advantage plans and your drug plans. So people who prefer original Medicare, we've already talked about this, if they want flexibility, uh, they want to manage their own health care, they want to travel, uh, they, or they live somewhere where there's no Medicare coverage. So Medicare A, as most of you know, is hospital insurance. You paid for that after 10 years of work, what, during 10 years of work. You have to be admitted, though, as an inpatient, not observation. Medicare A will only pay if you're an inpatient. What does it mean? What does that mean? That when you're admitted, um, well, that's what you're classified. Well, um, it, that's how they admit you at the hospital. You, they put you under, uh, under the category. So the admitting doctor would put, you, would put you either in for observation or as an inpatient. Now, the inpatient, it's well, it's three days before you get the other benefits, yeah. So, um, so basically, if you, otherwise Medicare B would pay, which would be 20%, which would get to. So basically, if you are in for three days, uh, there are some other benefits. You get skilled nursing care for rehab, not permanent placement in a nursing home, just till you feel better. You break your hip, you're in the hospital for three days, then they ship you off to a, a nursing home to get better. Um, this is not talking about long-term care, like you're in there permanently. This is just for temporary. Um, also, you get home health care if, if you have, uh, is paid for under Medicare A, if you're in for uh, three days. And hospice, which is, you know, if you have a terminal condition um, and you're near the end of life, uh, you can join a hospice program, and Medicare A will pay. So there's no premium, like we said, for Medicare A. Uh, there is a whopping big hospital deductible, though, $1,600 uh, $1, per benefit period. Uh, the benefit period starts when you enter the hospital, and it ends 60 days after you're discharged. So if you don't have a supplement or something else, or Medicaid or something else uh, uh, paying that, you could pay more than one a year, you know. One, uh, one, uh, more than one deductible a year. Does everyone understand that? Okay, yeah, that's an important thing to know. Yep. But if your bill is like $50,000 or something, paying 1600 sounds kind of reasonable, <laughs> and they pay the balance? Yes. Okay. Yeah, for, for your be for during the benefit period, yes. Right. Yeah. So, um, yes, it is, but when you're on a fixed income, $1,600 is a lot of money. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so, so... Yep. So the benefit period means per incident, per admission? Yes. Is that what that means? Yes. So if you have multiple emissions over a period of time for different things, you may end up paying more than one deductible. This is why it's important if you can afford it to get a, um, to get a, a supplement to cover that, that particular um, bill. Yep. Um, there was something when you had to be hospitalized for three days right. before you went in to the nursing home. Rehab or nursing? Well, rehab is done in nursing homes. So nursing homes usually have two types of services. Many have many more, but they usually have rehab, rehabilitation. So that's like if you, you have a uh, an acute condition. So, for example, you fall down, you break your hip, you, you have the surgery, you're in the hospital three days, they ship you off to, I don't know, the manor in Morrisville, um, and then while you, you have a certain amount of time, they will pay for you to be in there. Then if you have, have to be in a nursing home for a chronic long-term condition, that's not co covered by Medicare. That, no. So. Um, and if you and if you go in with and you you do need chronic care along with your bad leg, they won't cover you if you're not improving. Right. Well, that's when you, you apply for another program. All the time. Getting worse. <laughs> <laughs> they don't cover you. Yeah. So uh, yes, um, you got and you got to get improve enough to go home. That's what they're doing. You know, they give you PT, OT, um, and hopefully you improve enough to go home. You're not going to be playing basketball. <laughs> but neither am I. 
so Medicare B is all of your medical services. And we talked about this already briefly. Um, there's outpatient um, uh, stuff, lab tests, x-rays, PT, OT, a durable medical equipment, um, all of that good stuff, dialysis, if you're unfortunate enough to have end-stage kidney disease. So Medicare B pays for that. And this is what you're paying the $164.90 for. Um, and to find out what's covered by Medicare B, there are a few different places you can look. One is the Medicare and You Handbook, which you should get one at the very soon. There it is, 2024 is, <laughs> 2024 is out. If you go online, they'll send it to you online. You're right. You can, so if, if we have time, we're going to go to Medicare.gov. So that's where you would find all that information, too. Um, or you could call Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. You could go there, too. So um, yeah, so a lot of this stuff is online. Some people prefer the book. That way, they could draw, I don't know, funny cartoons of their doctor. Yeah, if you go online, they're going to send it to you online. That's the problem. So this is how you figure out what is covered. Now, to, for, to be covered by Medicare, one of the rules is it has to be medically necessary. So sorry, guys, your facelifts aren't covered. <laughs> so, uh, pardon? The mirror says so. The mirror says so, okay. <laughs> so you'd want to look it up. Okay, so we talked about the $164. Now, if you're on Medicare, there is a B. There is an annual deductible of $226. You pay the first $226 starting every January. You have to pay that deductible. Um, and then Medicare covers 80%, you pay 20%. So that can really add up. If you th figure that a, a knee replacement costs $50,000, uh, 20% of that is $10,000. So that's why people buy the supplemental insurances to cover that. Now it says, there's a, a footnote here for most people, people who make over like $90,000 a year or double that for married couples, um, they can be charged an extra premium. Uh, so most people get the 164.90, but uh, people who are making good money, they're, they may get an extra premium on top of the 164.90. But it's like $90,000 uh, before you hit that. So, okay, late enrollment. If you don't sign up for Medicare B when you're first eligible and you don't have credible employer insurance, you can get a penalty when you do. And the penalty is equal to 10% a year. So if you wait three years, you just get Medicare A, you wait three years to, to uh, go on Medicare B, you're going to have a 30% penalty. So that could really add up. 30% um, of what? The, the uh, premium. Annually, you're saying? No, every month. So it would be $164 plus uh, this year, plus, plus uh, the, the 30%. So if you figure even if it's just $10, you know, that, that really adds up. Um, so, um, yeah, everyone grumbles when they hear that. You know, there's always grumbling in the room. Um, so it's best to sign up when you're first eligible. Now, some people continue to work after they turn 65. I'm one of them. I turned 65 in April. And I decide to stay with the Council on Aging plan that I've had for a long time. So I'm not for until I retire in one year, three months, and three days. Uh, <laughs> but who's counting? <laughs> I will be on Council on Aging insurance. Um, uh, so you have a choice. And, but that depends on a few things. First of all, if your employer and this is for yourself or your spouse, you have to be legally married, uh, if they have um, less than 20 employees or 100 if you're disabled, you need to go on Medicare. Um, you need to sign up. What did it just do? Mm, there we go. Uh, you want to check with your employer about drug coverage and um, if you could use your employer insurance as a supplemental. <coughs> so for folks who work for places that have over 20 employees, or over 100 if you're disabled, um, you, can, you can put off signing up for Medicare and you won't be penalized down the road like in one year, three months, and three days. Um, so you can delay the penalty. It has to be you or your spouse. And if Medicare is less expensive, you may want to go with that. Um, if it's more expensive, um, 
you, you may want to uh, stick with your employer insurance. And then you would check with your employer, um, you know, if you could sign up for A, or if you have an HRA or HSA, you know, a health reimbursement account or health savings account, uh, where your employer gives you a, a debit card with money on it for health things, you want to check with your employer then. Because some of those end, not all of them, it depends on the contract between the employer and the, 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 the company that holds the account. Some of them end once you go on any Medicare. So, so you, you definitely want to make sure that um, you're, you're, you're not going to lose that extra money um, if you go on Medicare Part A. Um, if you don't have one of those, Medicare Part A is free, so you might as well do it. Um, okay, signing up, uh, we recommend three months ahead of time before your 65th birthday or three months before you plan to retire. Uh, they, of course, vet you. You sign up with Social Security. We live in the days of identity theft, so they do, uh, you know, they vet you. They check out that you are who you really say you are, and so your benefits aren't used by someone else. I went to visit a woman once and she had her benefit statement and it said she had psychiatric help in Florida. She never been to Florida. So someone had obviously taken her number and was using it down in Florida to get to get some sort of psychiatric help. Probably drug related, but we never found that out. So basically when you turn 65 you have a window. Three, you can sign up three months ahead of time the month you turn 65 and three months later. So you have a seven month window when you can sign up. So if you're still working, um, you probably want to sign up a month or two ahead of time and start Medicare on the day you're not going to have insurance anymore. So, and that depends, that's different for the different um, employers. So. Um, some people are automatically enrolled if they're already on Social Security, either through disability or um, early retirement. They're automatically enrolled in, in um, uh, Medicare. They don't have to do anything. A as far as A and B goes, you have to do things about the other stuff. So that's basic Medicare A and B. Now we're going to move on to supplements, the supplemental insurance companies, the Medigaps, which probably you guys are curious about. Um, are we doing okay so far? Yeah. Yes. I don't see anyone hear anyone snoring, so I guess we are. Uh, so supplemental insurance is these piggyback on Medicare A and B, um, and they are private policies. Um, they're designed to cover the gaps in A, which is the sixteen hundred dollars, and B, which is the twenty percent. Uh, to get one, you have to be signed up for Medicare A and B. Um, you cannot have an Advantage plan and a, a supplement at the same time. Um, and you cannot be refused for a supplement the first six months after you go on Medicare B. It's called guaranteed issue. So in one year, three months, and three days, um, at that point I can, I can sign up, even though I'll be over 65, I can sign up for a supplement and uh, they cannot turn me down because that's when I'm going to start Medicare B, or that's the plan anyway. Um, so that's uh, very important, uh, be and we'll tell you why. Um, you usually enroll directly with the insurance providers. So um, there is, uh, if you look on Medicare, your Medicare um, workbook, you can see there's information on Medicare supplements. Um, you can also go to Department of Financial Regulation and see what's available in the state of Vermont, which I'm going to show you in a minute. Or you could call an insurance company, so you could do it either way. So the Medigaps are governed by federal rules, and here they are. So. This is the stuff Medicare doesn't cover on this side of the page. This is in the Medicare handbook. Um, I'm not sure where it is in 2024, uh, but uh, uh, it, I think it was page 70 or something like that. So these aren't covered. And then to make your life more confusing, there's Medicare A, B, C, and D. The Medigaps are also named A, B, C, and D. So uh, a Medigap C plan is not the same as a Medigap, um, 
a Me Medicare Advantage C plan. So, um, so all of these levels cover something else. So you'll notice A does not cover the Part A deductible. And so if you get an A plan, you have to pay that $1,600. Most of them cover the 20% for Medicare B. Some ca cover uh, foreign travel if you want to go to Europe a lot. Um, that might interest you. Um, some cover, uh, let's see, what those excess charges you might get out of state. They cover that. Um, so the one thing they don't cover is the Part B deductible. Now, the Plan C up there and the Plan F say they do, but there's a, a, a catch with them. Those are no longer available. You had to have turned 65 before um, January 1st, 2020 to get an S, a C or an F plan. So if you did turn 65 before uh, that date, you can go to your insurance company and get, and get those plans. The rest of us have to pay the deductible. There are also other plans, and we're talking about a J plan before, um, that is, it, it's so old it's not even on the list, you know, so, it, but they're grand. Yeah. I pay $255 a month mm -hmm. for my copay. Yeah, for your uh, premium, what well, you pay a month, yeah. Yes, yeah. which I think is ridiculous. Well, we're going to talk about prices in, in the next slide. So <laughs> the other thing is, so the G is the Cadillac right now. That's the best plan you can get right now if you're going on Medicare. And then the K, L, M, and N are hybrid plans. So they cover like 20 or 75% of the, the 20% as opposed to the whole thing. They have out-of-pocket limits, though, which is attractive to some people. And the N plan, it covers 100%, but when you read the footnote at the bottom of the page, you'll find out you have co-pays every time you go to a doctor. Okay, so these are the federal regulations. Does everyone feel okay with that? Everyone nod, okay. Oh, yes, sir. How do you, how do you choose a supplemental insurance company? Yeah. Um, well, we're, get, we're, going to, uh, we're going to show you what's available in Vermont. So if you're going to sell these anywhere in the United States, an, an A or a C or an N, you have to follow these rules. These are the general rules. Then you go to the state where you're going to buy it. So this is, this is our state. So this is from the Department of Financial Regulation website. And, and basically, uh, the, the companies, they say, I want to sell this type of plan or that type of plan. Then they have to go. <laughs> come to Vermont, go to our Department of Financial Regulation, and get essentially a license to sell. So, um, you know, so these guys all went and got permission from the state of Vermont to sell the particular plans that are listed here. It's 2022. Yeah, that, but that, uh, yeah, there, so the prices are about there. Yeah, so that's, uh, you know, so you're looking at about approximately those prices. So, oh, oh, well, um, if you think about uh, what you'd pay in the private market for insurance, $1,200 per person, you know, uh, a few dollars, they do go up a, a little bit every year. Now you'll see the C plan and the F plan are grayed out because they're no longer available. Um, there are, there's a whole variety of prices, uh, some like State Farm and uh, United Healthcare, which is AARP, or United American, are up to 266, 267. Um, the, uh, the cheaper ones, uh, Ascendo is no longer providing them, but you know you have Medigap Blue, and you also have, uh, let's see, Continental Aetna. They're pretty cheap, they're 165.02 a month. Um, if you look, I'm looking at, um, the F plans, but if you look at the G plans, you're looking at 168 for the G plan for Continental and 167 uh, for the Vermont, the Medigap Blue. So there's another Blue Cross Blue Shield up there, if you'll notice. So what Blue Cross Blue Shield does is they have two, two levels of plans. The cheaper one is the one you go on when you first turn 65. So in that six month window after your 65th birthday, if you sign up, you can get that plan. If you wait, like say a year or two, 
then you go on the more expensive plan. So that's how Blue Cross Blue Shield does it. Now, I said that we're guaranteed issue for six months. Um, that means after that, they don't have to give you a plan. So if you're on a more expensive plan, let's say you're on uh, the State Farm plan um, for, uh, let's go to the G, uh, uh, or, or Humana. The Humana G plan is 207. You want to look for, oh, Global Life is uh, 241. So you want to look for a cheaper plan. So let's say you call up um, another insurance company looking for a cheaper plan. <coughs> they do do underwriting and they look at prior conditions. So they don't, and they don't have to accept you or they can charge you more. It's in the plan's discretion. So it's very important that when you go through that six month period, you pick a, a plan that you would really feel comfortable with long term. Are you saying pre-existing conditions would be considered? Yes, after six months. So, um, and the idea is that uh, they want you to get insurance while you're still young and healthy. Yeah. And that means 65. <laughs> Uh, I mean, I'm glad to hear that. Um, but if you wait till 80, when you have a heart condition, you might not necessarily get insurance. Yes. So every, every insurance company that's authorized to sell Medigap insurance mm -hmm. has to give you the six months yes. without looking at anything. Prior. That's right. They don't look at your prior ex pre exist That's kind of the deal to get a license. They don't look at the pre-existing conditions. For six months. For six months. After that, they can. So um, Blue Cross Blue Shield has their method of doing it, the higher priced one, the one that costs $100 more a month. Um, but uh, you know, other companies, they can charge you, I don't know, a few extra dollars a month, or they can deny you. So if you wait till you get cancer and you go apply for a plan, um, you know, uh, uh, they may, you may not get the, the insurance, the supplemental. Can be denied Medigap coverage with, because of the pre-existing condition. Correct. After six months. After six months, right. So, and then if you're going shopping for cheaper plans, uh, sometimes uh, they they look at that stuff too. Uh, but sometimes, if you've already had a plan, they they uh, you know they. Uh, uh, you know, they say, oh, well, you've already had a plan, so, you know, you know uh, join ours. It's their discretion. It's their, what they choose to do. So, so and this is right on the website uh, for Department of Financial Regulation, so you could look that up. Um, where do you buy one? Here are the phone numbers uh, of all the companies that sell them. Ascendo is no longer in the state. Um, so, uh, uh, you know, you have Blue Cross Blue Shield. You can apply online, buy an application. They can mail you one. You could call them up. Sometimes they do it over the phone. You know, they all have their own method of signing you up. But um, you can um, you can What's do that. What's the most popular company, Blue Cross Blue Shield? Yeah, well, they're one of the cheapest. Yeah, but there are people who swear by AARP. You know, my grandmother had it. My Healthcare. uncle. United Healthcare, yep. There, so there are people who. Two hundred and fifty-one dollars, but I don't. If I go in the hospital, I don't have to pay any deductible, right. or if I, I, mean, yes. I don't pay any deductible, even in January. Yeah. So that would be. January, yeah. So that would be uh, like the old C plans and the old F plans. Uh, okay. They pay. Yeah, and the, and the J J is not on the chart, but they would they would uh, pay your two hundred twenty-six dollars. So, but now you can't buy that. If, unless you were turned 65 before January 1st, 2020, then you can. So if you, let's say you worked for five years and uh, you're, you're 70 years old and you're just buying, you'd be uh, eligible to get the C. People move to Scandinavia. Yes. So um, what percentage of people have Medigap insurance? Do you have any statistics on that? No, no, because um, usually it's people who have um, incomes of, uh, that are above, above the state programs that help with health insurance. So uh, we don't know exactly. Okay, so that's supplemental insurance. Mm -hmm. Then we have Medicare D. So if you get a supplement, remember you're, you're probably 
If you get a good one, you're covered. So first, the doctor bills Medicare then they, or, or the hospital, and then they bill your supplement, and you usually have nothing to pay at the, the doctor's office. Uh, Medicare D is the drug coverage they invented in 2006. It's prescription drugs only, and all of these are also private insurance companies. Uh, there are 24 of them in the state of Vermont this year. You choose a plan based on your medications. Uh, the premiums, deductibles, and co-pays vary with each plan, so you want to look at the plan details. Um, you go to Medicare.gov, and hopefully we'll have time to go there in a few minutes. Um, and we have a video on our website, the CVCOA website, um, that tells you how to enroll. So if you forget everything I say, you could always go watch the video. Um, annually, between October 15th and December 7th, you get to change your plan. So that's open enrollment, and that's coming up. And that's when you get all that junk mail. But that's open enrollment for everything you have to do with Medicare. No, it's only for the drug plans and the Advantage plans. The Medigaps you could change uh, any time of year if the drug company, uh, the company will have you. So. But, but, the, but, but if you're choosing Advantage and then you want to go back to Medicare, you would do that. Right. Open enrollment. Right. Well. Yes, for the beginning, it starts January 1st, then your new coverage. So here again with the uh, Medicare D plans, if you don't sign up for them when you're first eligible in that seven month window, you could get a 1% per month penalty. So um, there's an annual notice of change that shows up every September telling you if your plan, if the plan you're on is changing. Uh, if you do nothing, you just roll over. And that's the same with the Medigaps and the Advantage plans. Uh, there is federal assistance and state assistance out there. There's Medicaid, Medicare Savings uh, Plan, Low Income Subsidy, and VFARM. And as you can see, the income levels are awful low. So um, to be on Medicaid, you'd have to make, as an individual, uh, less than $1,258 a, year, a month. But as a couple, it's the same. So even though there are two of you, you, do have to, uh, you are able to keep $1,000 more in, in the bank. But uh, basically, the income level is pretty low there. Yeah. Yes, sir. Um, I just know I got my notice for a change recently, mm -hmm. and uh, it seems to repeat a pattern that has happened for the last several years, where the uh, I get a high deductible Part D because uh, mm -hmm. I'm lucky right now and not using any drugs, uh, but to maintain the and so when uh, I'm finding that. Like this year, the repeat of the mm -hmm. son, of the plan I'm signed up with mm -hmm. is increasing by 130 percent. So, and um, that's not the first time that's happened. Right. That it seems like I have. So it's just interesting that you have to do have to look pretty carefully at that. And, yeah. and go. I find myself bouncing back and forth from mm -hmm. if if yeah. I'm just basically maintaining it just to say that I have the cover. Right. So what we usually do with people who have no drugs and they don't want to pay the penalty down the road is we put them on the cheapest plan out there. So the cheapest plan out there for 2023 was called Silver Script Smart. It's six dollars and eighty cents. So uh, so basically, people who don't have drugs go on the cheapest plan, so they don't get penalized down the road. Uh, but because your penalty will probably be more than six dollars and eighty cents. And every year they could go from that cheapest plan to the next cheapest plan. But yeah, you 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 need to come and visit us. <laughs> well, it's that, that more than once they've been like yes. paying six dollars a month, yeah. and then all of a sudden the next time it was going to be fifteen dollars a month. Right. And and then there is um, yeah there are companies who start off really low, you know, at twelve dollars a month or whatever, and then before you know it, you're paying over fifty. They jump up every year because you, you roll over if you do nothing. So uh, they, they count on people. Yes? A comment more than a question. Um, I too have, uh, I check my drug, uh, my drug plan mm -hmm. every year. And I guess I had from the beginning what you said, so sex maybe. Right now, uh, Silver Script Smart is six dollars and eighty cents. No, but the point, my point is this: it's worth checking. I have changed drugs 
almost every year. Right. There have been exceptions, but almost every year I've taken it because I go for the cheapest. Yeah. Yep. And that works fine. Yeah. Um, and there is, a, did you mention the, the tool that's available on the Medicare? Well, I thought we should go to that. <laughs> I use, and it's very simple. You can put in your drugs or no drugs. Mm -hmm. You can have a generic or yeah. personalized, and it lists them in whatever. Yeah. Exactly. So I'm going to skip since we're on Medicare D, and we um, this is where you get the app. You know, so if um, we we already talked about a lot of this stuff, so I'm just going to close this program. Is this on your website? This one, no. Oh. This one, no. The, what's on the website is, ooh, did I do something? <laughs> uh, let me do this. And then I'm going to go to Google, where I have, dun da da dun the Medicare.gov. So this, the first thing you need to know about Medicare.gov, this is where you pick out your D plans and your Advantage plans. So the first thing you need to know about this website is they have smiling people. <laughs> and every few months they change the smiling people. So if you go on this in three months, these, this may not be the same smiling people. Don't get confused. So you can create an account for yourself if you would like um, with a password and username and all that, all that stuff that a lot of people do that and then they never remember what they are. So, but if you do, it pulls up all of your activity from the last year. So some people find that, who are more tech savvy than me, find that very, uh, very helpful. We usually go to find plans. Um, and it, you know, it says there's a place for find care, give, um, find care providers and uh, talk to somebody. So this is, this is going to have, has to wake up. Oh, down here. Ooh, it blinked again. Find plans. Okay, so we have another smiling guy, and so you know you're in the right place. You can log in or you can put in your zip code. So my zip code is 05661 uh, for my office, so, and then it asks me what I want to do. So let's say I'm looking for a drug plan, I hit that button, and then I hit find plans. And then it asks me if I'm on any of these programs because the prices are different if you're on the programs. But I'm going to put, uh, I don't get any help because that's simpler to show you. Uh, and this is what the video on our website says. Then you go to next. Okay, do I want to see the price of my drugs? Well, yeah. So then it tells me I'm doing great. And then, this thing is very blinky. Pardon? Oh, <laughs> talking too fast. <laughs> so then you put in your drugs. So let's put in a few drugs. Um, metformin, for those of you who don't know, is for folks who are uh, diabetic. Um, and as you see, there's different types of metformin, so you want to make sure to put in the right one. So for today, we'll go to this one, allogopinatin metformin. So then I, I hit add drug, and then it gives me a choice of what my dose is. So let's say, uh, this doesn't give much of a choice, so it's 12.5-1000 uh, or, or dash 500 milligrams. So I put in my dose, and then how many I need a month. Uh, so let's say I take two a day. I could also do this by three months or a year. Yeah, so you can, so if you, you're with a company where you get it cheaper if you buy three months, you could, you could figure that out too. But we're going to stick with the, the basic way because I get confused. So, um, so we're going to add that to our list. So that's on our list. So let's go to Synthroid. And there's a reason we picked that one. Synthroid. So, oops. And then add drug. Okay, so now it's telling me that there's a generic. It's still. I'm still. I'm, I'm going too fast. I'm sorry. My drug has a generic, so I don't have to buy the synthroid. I could get levothyroxine as the generic. So, so that helps identify generic drugs. Okay, so let's add that generic instead. 
And then this is the standard dose for most people. Sorry, I'm touching. I, every time I touch the mouse, it does that. Um, so let's go, just go with the standard dose. I take a 50 uh, MCG, uh, one a day, um, every month. So 30 a month. Uh, then we could throw in a torvastatin. OK, that's a good one. Yeah, usually I use um, simvastatin, but a torvastatin works. So let's see what happens if we add in a torvast. There, so it pops up even if I don't know how to spell it. Uh, so is it with amlodipine or not? No amlodipine, OK. Uh, so there is a ortorvastatin. And uh, what, what size? That looks good, OK. Uh, 40 milligrams, one a day, uh, so for 30 a month. So let's say then, uh, so I add that to my list. Those are my three. And then I go down here, and I tell it I'm done adding drugs. And then it asks for me to name my local pharmacies. So I usually spread the net pretty wide, uh, 25 miles. And these are the pharmacies that are available within 25 miles of, of the zip code I put in there. So there's Hannaford's, there's CVS. Uh, let's see, oh, there was a mail order. I forgot the mail order if you want to look at that. So you could put in up to five at a time. Um, Hannaford Supermarket, CVS, there's a Kinney's. Um, yep, here's our Kinney's. Uh, the Kinney's? Yeah. Oh, good. Okay. Okay, and we're, we're having a new one open up on, um, on Mountain Road and Stowe. We're going to hit that just for kicks and giggles. So we got five pharmacies there. The reason is some of the pharmacies are not in the network. In other words, they don't have a contract with that insurance company. Some are standard pharmacies, so you get a little bit of a discount. And some are preferred. The preferred is where you get the, the best price. So then you hit Done. And it uh, tells us what it gives us a list of what pharmacies would be best. And it sorts it by cheapest premium and cheapest cost. Now, this is for the rest of this year. So they say, if I'm going to go on this plan, well care value script would be the cheapest that's for me. That's a good one. $8.06 a month, so that's cheap. My total cost for the rest of the year would be $714. But, and then let's look at number two, Silver Script Smart. That's the cheapest one in 2024. There we go. We'll look at one more, uh, Cigna Saver. So that would be the third cheapest. Now, what you can do, you done? OK. Um, so but what you want to really do is you want to go to plan details down here. Now, your office provides this service. Right. So that if, if people aren't tech savvy, they can meet with the person, you can do it on the phone, and they'll do this for you. We'll do it on the phone or in person. Yeah. During the pandemic, we did everything. great every service, by the right. way. Right. Okay. Yeah, I yeah. So, but the thing to remember is we're coming into open enrollment right now. Yeah. So, make, um, your, appointment now. make yeah. your appointment now because after Thanksgiving, we're crazy. Yeah. We don't even answer the phone. It's nuts. Yeah. So, um, so if you want an appointment, the best thing to do is make it as close to, you know, make it um, ahead of time. Yeah. So, I'm making appointments already for the 25th of October. Uh, so, yeah. yeah so. Yeah, well, the 10 days that I can make appointments, yes. My, my, the main office makes other appointments for me. So. It's pretty easy to do online. If you, it took me a long time, but mm -hmm. you can do it. Yeah, you can, you can do it. And we try to encourage people yeah. to learn how to do this. So the plan details here. Um, there is a drug deductible, but it doesn't necessarily mean you don't get the discount. Do you have a question? A what? Comment. A comment. Okay. Yeah? And I think it's important to know whether they are companies that are in the United States 
or some other country. Mm -hmm. country. Yeah. Because the service you get will be totally different. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you would want to know, that would be one of the, the factors you'd want to know. Usually the, I think right up at the, the, uh, yeah, there is, their, their address is in here. Maybe it's at the bottom. I just say address, yeah. Oh, there it is. So this one's in Florida. This is Cigna. So now if you go down here, you see that there are preferred pharmacies, and then there are in-network. The preferred are going to give me the better bet, going to give me the better price. And if you want to know what the prices will be, remember this is just for the end of this year, there's a, a list of prices. And you said the preferred uh, pharmacies are the better ones? That's right. Okay. You want a preferred pharmacy. Uh, they're the cheapest ones. So as you could see, um, in, at Hannaford's, um, your, uh, let's see, what is that? The atorvastatin, that gentleman would only pay, would pay zero. That would be his copay. And if he went to CVS, it would be $35. So that's the difference between a standard pharmacy and a preferred pharmacy. Preferred for that particular plan. That particular plan, yeah. yeah. And for that year, because I just right. got a notice from WellCare that they changed their preferred pharmacy mm -hmm. for next year. Yeah, every year or in September, you get a notice telling you what changes there will be. Yes? Is that a preferred pharmacy for only that drug, or is that? Only this plan. Only that plan. Right. Any drug under that right. plan would be preferred. You'd get the cheapest price. So if you're with this and, and you have, you, let's say you're given another drug, you can, um, you know, you'd get a preferred price. But it w you wouldn't have it itemized like this. So, so I would stick with uh, Kinney Drugs or Hannaford's um, or mail order if I wanted the best price. Uh, so. I have a problem with mail order. Um, like, it's one of those things is that the drugs are shipped third class. Mm -hmm. First class, they go second class mm -hmm. faster. Third class, if it's in the bucket at the end of the day, mm -hmm. it stays there for the next day right. or the next day or the next day. Mm -hmm. And has a big problem with that. And that is a consumer preference. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Some people and some people who get their mail in an old fashioned mailbox don't really want them left out at the street. Especially if you're getting opioids or something, yeah. you and know. Kidney so. drugs to the livers and not. Yeah, other. and the one in the Morrisville does as well. Tuesdays and Thursdays. Mm. So these are my estimated costs for the rest of the year, including my a premium, and then. The rest of the year mean calendar year. Calendar year, yeah, October, November, and December. And then what happens? Uh, January, well, you January, you, you can switch for January. So between October and December, you, you, you pick your plan for the next year. What's the deadline in December? The 7th, which is? Pearl Harbor. Pearl Harbor Day. Very good. You passed it. <laughs> but, but, that, but you can't change it in January if you've already selected something. That's correct. Unless you're on a state, one of the state plans, then they, they have different rules. But yeah, if you're just a regular person, not on any of the state plans, you, you, you pick then. Unless there is some misrepresentation or something like that. Oh, well, what you pick in October is what you get until next October. Right. Well, you, no, you get to uh, January 1st to January 1st. So if you pick it in October, it doesn't start till January. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, then you, so you have to live with it. So. Yes? If I turn 65 in February of next year, mm -hmm. when should I look at starting this? Well, um, it December? Well, part, three months, yeah. Okay. So, but you would do sign up for A and B first. You have to sign up for A and B first because then you can't get a drug plan or Advantage plan or supplement unless you're, you're already signed up for A and B. Okay. So that means Social Security made sure you are who you really say you are. Got it. <laughs> so, um, there's some additional information here. You could click on this button, and it gives it gives me the what the retail cost would be at Kinney's, and then uh, what the discount cost is. So you could do this with all 24 plans if you if you have the patience. Um, and if you want to try this yourself, you could go on. You don't have to create an account or anything. You go on there and play to your heart's delight. 
but during open enrollment, sometimes the, it crashes. So they can change the cost mid-year too. Like, well, they're not supposed to. Uh, so that's another another issue. Yes, sir. If you're a very expensive drug, you can go to Canada. Yeah, people do that if they're because and there are some, there are some um, drugs. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm thinking of one particular cancer drug that's thousands of dollars a month. Yeah, yeah. So and if people do that, they also ask for financial aid through either CV. Is it still CVH uh, and uh, UVM? They all have financial aid programs for drugs, or they. Uh, and if you're ever really stuck, most. Primary care doctors have social workers with them now, um, and they can look up, they can sometimes get you a deal. Okay, so now, have we had enough fun with this? I wanna show you one more thing. So I'm gonna go back all the way back up, and it's gonna blink like crazy. So I'm gonna go back to the search results for drugs. All right, so these are the, the this puts my 24 plans in order. But if you want to, Okay, you see up in the right-hand corner there, it says view 21 available Medicare Advantage plans. If you wanna check out the Advantage plans, you push that button. And we're gonna have a lot more flashing here. For those of us who get migraines, this is not a good thing. So if you hit that, it, it automatically shows you all of the Advantage plans. Um, and it's the same type of thing. We have a well care no premium, well care give back, well care no premium. There's AARP, another AARP, UVM, uh, MVP plan. A lot of people like that one. Uh, so if you go, but if you go to uh, plan details again, this tells you what all of your services will cost. So so let's see UVM Advantage here. Uh, that's uh, in collaboration with MVP. So healthcare deductible is zero. Drug deductible is 250, but that doesn't mean you're not gonna get a discount. Um, you pay your regular premium. And then here are your benefits. So primary doctor, zero. Out of network doctor, $5. Specialist, 35. Out of network, 50. And you could go all the way down here and look up whatever you want. So for hospital, um, instead of paying the 1600, you'd pay 450 for the first two days. So that would be 900. Um, then you go down here, and the one preventive services are always free. Um, and then if you occupational therapy, physical therapy, all that. So let's go down. So here you have all of these are in network, but um, so they're not preferred, but. Yes, yeah, so the prices for at Kinney's would still be zero for two of the drugs. So, um, so that would still be, uh, you know, the same price. But if you go, then let's go down farther. Uh, your drug cost for the rest of the year. Um, you could hit this for more. And all right, extra benefits. This is what a lot of people want to hear about, and this is why a lot of people get Advantage Plan. Yes, there are. There is hearing coverage. If you go in network you pay zero, uh, for your exam, you pay zero. Out of network, you pay 50. Uh, fitting evaluation, you can see this for yourself. The AIDS costs anywhere from 699 to 1,000. Um, and then there's dental. And the thing with dental is there's two types of dental. So there's preventive de dental. This is what you have twice a year you're supposed to have. Um, you know, your cleaning, your examination, your x-rays. There's zero co-pays for that, but fluoride treatment is not covered. If you just have Medicare, it's not covered. That's right. Dental is not covered by it. That's correct. Regular Medicare does not cover dental, so hearing, or vision. Again? Pardon? This is, this is an advantage, this is an advantage oh, plan. Oh, I'm sorry. It is a, yeah, it's, so it is, this is the UVM Advantage Plan. Okay. So their network, this network covers all of New York except for the city in Long Island and um, all of Vermont. So they have uh, uh, people everywhere. So then there's comprehensive dental. So this is where things get scary. 
this is your fillings, your, your drillings, you know, all that horrible stuff they do to you that you don't want to think about. As you could see, you, the most, uh, you, they would cover up to 50% of that. So um, if you have, uh, you know, a crown which costs $3,000, they might cover uh, 1,500 of it. And I'm guessing. If you're, if you're poor and, or you just don't want to pay all the money that the dentists charge, you can go down to the uh, Vermont Technical College mm -hmm. in Williston, mm -hmm. and it's quite a bit less. I yeah. had my x rays done down there mm -hmm. and then go to a regular dentist. Yeah. And we have a clinic up in, in Morrisville, but right now they're not making appointments because they have such a long waiting list. Mm -hmm. So, I've so. Been there too. So, and then vision is another thing people look for, glasses. Um, again, you know, you're going to look for in-network, um, but your eye exam would cost you 50 out of network, zero in-network. Um, and then, um, but you'll also notice in the right-hand column, it says limit supply. So let's hit one of those. What, 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 was the, what did you say? In that right-hand column, yeah. it says limit supply. So we're going to hit that now, the top one. Um, there may be limits on how much the plan will provide. So you want to, so that's like getting prior approval. You, you want to get prior approval. For a routine eye, 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 eye exam, yeah. So your doctor, your PCP could say, yes, it's time for your eye exam. Mine tells me that all the time and I ignore her. But uh, no, I don't ignore her, I listen to her actually. Okay, so those are how you find out your Advantage plans. Medicare D plans, and the other way to do it is you call the senior helpline at Council on Aging and make an appointment. <laughs> so, questions, comments? Yes, ma'am. What are the downsides of the Advantage? Well, you have to use their network for most of them. Remember, this is these. There's 21 of them, and they all have different contracts with different providers. So if Dr. Smith down the road doesn't want to work with Blue Cross Blue Shield, he doesn't have to sign up with them. If he wants to work with AARP, he can sign up with them. Um, so also some of them are geographically limited, like this UVM plan, it's for mostly upper New York State and uh, Vermont. Uh, so South Carolina is, you know, you wouldn't have coverage there. Um, so those are the things people look at. Um, also, some nursing homes, uh, if you're going for rehab, they only take certain plans. So, um, yes? Can you talk a little about One Care and what it is? One Care. Well, One Care is going to be a, is a network they're trying to develop under the Affordable Care Act. And basically, you sign up with the network and everyone gets to share your information. Um, I don't think it's really being as effective as they want it to be. Um, so a lot of people are, are opting out. You get a choice to opt in or out at your doctor's office. Uh, you look confused, lady in green. One care? I don't understand what one care is. One care is a network. So basically, if you go to one doctor who's a member of one care, all the doctors in one care can get your information. Well, it's all over northern Vermont. Mm -hmm. There's hardly any doctors that aren't under that. It's an ACA, which uh, Well, the from the Affordable Act. Care Act. It was developed under the Affordable Care Act uh, that you can, uh, the states can create one. We created one in Vermont called One Care. And um, <laughs> so the doctors who are members it's, it's like uh, you get on the computer program for everyone else in the network. So your information can be shared. Position for National Health Plan is on, on a mission to get rid of one care because it's not doing anything. It's just another level of administration that's taking money away from the doctors who, and nurses who need the money. And I have a lot of information from the League of Women Voters because I'm a member, and we're doing a study in Vermont right now about whether uh, health care should be a public good 
yes. or not. <laughs> and yeah. we would like to have it, you know, some people call it socialized medicine, but yeah. Like so, so this was this was developed so like if you go uh, let's say you, you go you're going to cardiologist for years then you need to go to an ortho surgeon the ortho surgeon if you're all in one care can look up your cardio stuff so yeah so that is um, that is the that was the whole idea was sharing information do you have a, a question you're just touching your hat oh okay. Well, sometimes. Uh, there's a new one for this year, Chronic Pain Management and Treatment Services. Yeah. Is that like the UVM Comprehensive Pain Program? I think so. I'm not sure, but I think so. We, ha I mean, up in Copley, there's a chronic pain doctor. Yeah, uh, that was yeah. the other one. Yeah, so, um, there are, so that's something else that they're covering now. I was, yeah. They cha so you call up, but, you know, always call up and make sure it's covered. Right, yeah. Um, and That's the doctor's the office is, yeah. Yeah. So before I have any procedure, I tell the doctor to make sure, the surgeon or doctor, to make sure to get prior approval so I know what's covered. Um, you know, the one thing you have to remember is we're supposed to get free colonoscopies every 10 years. If they don't bill it as a screening colonoscopy, if they bill it as a diagnostic, uh, colonoscopy, you get a seven hundred dollar bill. Thank you. So you have to specify, you know, what you want, and work with your doctor. And if you don't have the kind of relationship with your doctor where you can work with them and figure this out and, and work it out, maybe it's time to think about getting another doctor if you can find one. <laughs> so. You can't find one. Yeah. You're trying to find one out of one care. You can't find one. I tried to get one with different hospitals up here in Berlin, and they said there are 26 people in front of you waiting for a new doctor, a new primary yeah. care box. So that is a problem all over, all over the country. So, so okay. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, what do you think of the UVM plans? Well, a lot of people are very happy with the UVM Advantage plan. So if I, uh, if I change from the traditional Medicare this year to UVM, and then next year want to change back to uh, the original Medicare, would that be any problem? You could change to original Medicare. I can't guarantee you would get your supplement back. That oh, okay. supplement. But otherwise, I could do it. Yeah. I would do it mostly for the yeah. dental insurance. Yeah, so dental insurance with, uh, regular yeah. Medicare. And a lot of people do that, or they go buy a private policy through Delta Dental or Humana or one of those companies. Uh, but you got to remember, with the dental policies, there's the regular services, and then there's the the big stuff, the comprehensive, you know, the fillings and the crowns and all said, of that. You said if, I, if I'm on an Advantage plan and I want to switch back to original Medicare, mm -hmm. I may not be able to get Medigap insurance. You, you may not be able to get your why supplement would I, back. Why would I be rejected? Be, if you had pre-existing conditions. Of any kind. Of any, co yeah, it's up to the insurance company at oh, that point. That's after after but usually, after your six months. But pre existing, of course, does not apply to dental. No. no. Um, uh, so, what was the question again? Yeah. Uh, so, going back. Oh. Yeah. So. Um, well, that depends what they are. Uh, that depends what they are, and it's up to the insurance company. Yeah. So basically, um, there is a uh, grace period when you first go on an Advantage plan where you can switch back. It's like uh, uh, two months or something. So the first two months, if you hit your Advantage plan in January and February, you can go back, switch back to your old plans. And, or if you're given... So if I get rejected in the Medigap plan, can I then turn around and get... Is my guarantee coverage with the uh, Advantage plan? Yes. Plans? Advantage yeah. plans don't look, and Advantage plans and drug plans do not look at pre-existing conditions. So, yes. that's the state law. Because yes. some yes. state yes. you can plan the only one that has dental? No, they all have dental. They all have So you want to go to the, the plan details for each one. Okay. 
to see what the one you're choosing is, is what, what coverage they have. Some cover the fluoride treatment, some don't. Some it's 20%, some it's 40%. You know. Yeah, they all have them. So the best thing to do is to go on this and play with it or make an appointment to come visit us before you make those decisions. Whenever I have someone wants to go on an advantage plan, I show them the plan details and say, this is what you have to live with. So, yes, sir. Yeah, you said when you sign up for Medicare Advantage, first you sign up for the Medicare B. A and B. A and B. Mm -hmm. And you said you pay your, you get your... With the B, you said you put the premium on the shelf. No, not the premium. You put the coverage on the shelf. Put the, what do you mean by putting the coverage on the shelf? Basically, you don't use A and B. You only use the Advantage plan that you've signed up for. Okay. So. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're very welcome. And remember, we'll do this individually, too. You know, I have some uh, handouts up there. I only have a few council on aging brochures. We're running uh, low on them. I have some on our caregiver programs, which if you know someone who's a caregiver and needs support, you should pick up one of those. I have three pages of that, uh, three or four pages from the presentation on supplements and on my business. So help yourself. Thank you. Thank you.